Hey guys, welcome to this 5 minute revision of Child of the Light Brigade. So this is going to be a quick analysis, key quotes and interpretations. If you've got a bit more time, I did upload a long version of this earlier this week, so go check that out. But if you're in need of some last minute revision or you want to identify your key quotes super quickly, then you're in the right place. So yeah, let's jump straight in. Okay, so Charge of the Light Brigade was written by Alfred Tennyson, and a super rough overview is that this poem explores a battle during the Crimean War between British and Russian forces. Due to miscommunication, the British soldiers ride into their death. So what this does is that this poem really explores the idea of, you know, patriotism and obedience and Tennyson is trying to, like, get us to remember exactly how brave the soldiers were for just, you know, listen to a command because it's not the place to question their soldiers. In terms of context, we know that it was set during the Crimean War, but um, it's also really important to remember that there's a major imbalance of weapons. So the British troops had sabres, which are kind of like swords, whereas the Russian troops had guns. Um, also, the Light Brigade were not equipped for a fight, like, there weren't a battalion that went out and, you know, fought big battles and what Tennyson really wanted to do and was asked to do was to write about the sacrifice. In terms of the structure, it's written as six stanzas which tells a story and this is again aided by the fact that it's written in third person. There's loads of repetition here because Tennyson is really trying to ingrain the fact that they were so brave and so mighty into our heads. In terms of themes, we see conflict, so we definitely see the conflict between men because we know it was, it was written about war. Um, we also see like themes such as religion because we see a lot of religious imagery which is kind of used to you know, further um, explain exactly how brave they were. And we see a lot of patriotism, and bravery and the sacrifice of the soldiers. Hey guys, we're on like no time so we're going to jump straight into the poem because it's six stanzas and I'm going to show you the key parts of the poem. If you haven't read it, definitely take a few seconds, pause the screen, read through it, read through meditations. The structure is the same as the big one, so it's the same things written around, but what this does um, in the short version is I'm going to show you exactly the, the, the important parts. So before we even start with the actual key quotes, I'm going to show you exactly how the structure changes. So stanzas 1 to 3 end in roll 600. So this kind of reiterates how many there were to make sure that we remember them and to make sure like that you know, we remember the 600 lives that you know went through this. But um, stanza 4 ends in not the 600 because at this point people have died stanza 5 of is um, left of 600 which is basically as they were treating how many people like actually managed to escape and stanza 6 ends in noble 600 so the fact that it ends like this it kind of allows the reader to take away exactly what happened stanza 1 we see valley of death and this is a religious um, reference and you know we have very negative connotations with death it kind of foreshadows what's coming we know that soldiers are going to meet their demise into the valley that they're about to enter Charge for the guns is a, the command that the soldiers follow, which ultimately leads to their death. Someone had blundered, again, um, this, this is a key part in the poem where we realise that someone's made a mistake and they've given the wrong command and the soldiers are now going to die because of it. Next few lines are also really important, from theirs not to make reply and then theirs but to do and die. So those three lines are really important because it demonstrates that one of the soldiers is not the place to question or what's happening or to go against them, but it's their place to you know, obey the commands. And Tennyson is actually pra praising the obedience and the discipline held by the soldiers, even though that's something might be wrong because remember they're a light brigade, they're not really equipped for fighting. The kind of situation that they kind of fall into is shown with jaws of death and mouths of hell. So the use of imagery here is quite sinister. So the reader can understand the severity of the situation. It's not really something they can run from. It seems like well, the deaths is all, are almost inevitable. So them being overpowered is shown again with the flashed all the sabers bare. So even though they were surrounded, that they continued to fight. So look at the use of imagery here. So they had sabers, which are swords, while the enemies had cannons and guns. And what this does is symbolizes the bravery as they continue to fight. In stanza four, we also see the use of sibilance with shattered and sundan. And what this does, it demonstrates the states of the brigade. It's kind of the idea that they they're putting up a fight regardless of the situation, which again shows their bravery. But ultimately what they do is that they do need to end up retreating and this is shown with cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them and cannon behind them. And this is also like a contrast to what we see in, in stanza 3 because now the cannons are behind them. So you know they are retreating and you know this idea of them being so heroic is kind of shown with um, horse and heroes fell. So the use of illustration here kind of emphasises the bravery and you know kind of tells us that the heroes that they should be admired that even as they were retreating people were still dying. So stanzas one to five really demonstrate exactly how they um, fought and like the story of it. But stanza six is also it's all more about Tennyson speaking to the reader. So when can the glory fade is a rhetorical question and Tennyson is challenging us and it kind of implies that they shouldn't be forgotten. Also honour the charge they made, the use of exclamation mark here is um, it changes the tone of the poem. So it's Tennyson like, commanding us directly to kind of remember them and honour them and to remember the sacrifice they did. 
ultimately like the way it ends with noble 600 it ends with a, um, a note that the reader can take away and you know T Tennyson uses the entire poem to really kind of reiterate exactly how brave they were so ending in it ending it in this way uh, really helps the reader know what to take away from the poem and the essence of the poem itself Okay guys, we're out of five minutes now. That was a super, super, super quick um, analysis to recap and the key quotes. Um, if you have more time, then I definitely recommend checking out the longer version because it really help you appreciate it more uh, because there's so much of, of this poem that we can take away. If not, um, we're going to leave it here. If you guys have any other interpretations or any other like tips like to, for last minute revision, please leave them in the comments. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will speak to you guys soon.